You're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's do justice to the last discussion now. The richness and diversity of Nigeria's culture has always been cited as a strong reason why tourism should be a major foreign exchange earner for the country. From the east to the west and the north down to the south, the country is naturally endowed with rich tourist sites. The Oshun Oshobo Grove, Obudu Cattle Ranch, Yankari Game Reserve, the Mambila Plateau, the list is inexhaustible. Now, when it comes to festivals, Nigeria is not lacking either. From the Arugungu Fishing Festival to the Ayo Festival in Lagos and the Doba, almost every state in the country hosts one or more festivals yearly. And as part of the drive to make Nigeria a tourist destination, the country celebrates the Nigeria Travel Week November every year. The event brings together buyers, consumers, entrepreneurs and other uh, service providers as well as the media to discuss the development of Nigeria's tourism industry. This is the crux of our, develop of our next uh, discussion now. I have with me in the studio the founder, Nigeria Travel Week, Efe Tobo Awana. Efe, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Great. Thank you for having me. Very good. And I also have uh, in the studio the CEO of Waka Waka Travels. <laughs> Nancy in Sofo. Nancy, good morning. Good morning. Is it Waka Waka or Waka Waka? Waka Waka. Uh, ha, very good. It's the Nigerian Waka Waka. Because yeah. if it's in Europe, they're all Waka Waka or no, something. No, it's Waka Waka. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now fine. Effie, let, let's start with, uh, with you on this. The, when it comes to tourism sites or destinations in Nigeria, we have them so many. Like we said earlier, every state, in fact, every local government has something. Every local government. Yet we still uh, ha have not focused our attention on some of these things where a lot of them are still in their very crude and uh, natural states, the way God gave it maybe since the beginning. Talk to us from this and how to develop all of these things. Well, th that's why we're doing Nigeria Travel Week mm. to basically sensitize people, especially the private sector, on the potential that tourism holds. So uh, we're looking to get Nigerians to buy into the tourism economy as mm. it were. Every other country in the world makes so much money from tourism yeah. and Nigeria should be no exception. Especially just like you have said, because we were so, so rich. Uh, look at our culture with 250 ethnic groups or one of the, one of the most diverse countries in the world. Mm. Uh, so whether it's our food, whether it's our dressing, I mean, we're very flamboyant people. Yeah. So naturally, people will want to travel for that. Then look at our natural attractions. I mean, Nigeria should be regarded as the waterfall paradise of the world, mm. you know, because we have over 100 waterfalls. I don't know how many Nigerians should waterfalls. know that we have have over in this country waterfalls yeah. in this country so wow. we need to start to sing about these things and get the those in in the local areas in those catchment areas to understand the uh, potential that they hold once they see that there's a lot of money to come from it then they'll start to create all of the jobs around it because mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, those selling them um, souvenirs to drinks to food to um, hotels and all of that. There are so many, so many mm. jobs that could be created from the tourism value chain. All right, Nancy, uh, let me take it from the Waka Waka issue that you, we talked about earlier on. Now, the point there is Nigerians are very mobile people. Yeah. We are known for that. Go to any part of the corner of this world, you will see Nigerians. But when it comes to the Waka Waka within the country, mm -hmm. traveling from one place to another, for tourist for tourism purposes, purposes. We, we don't get to see a lot of nigerians doing that well um we'll say first we'll say um now the story is quite different okay it's we changing eh? yeah it's changing okay. especially with the new train development it's been um an amazing experience for um tour operators especially those that are in the southwest mm -hmm. now you can connect from lagos to abekuta by the train and you know connect even from to Abekuta to ibadan mm. so even from abuja you can use the train to delta state and mm. and so on so you know the old transport system is changing now so you don't necessarily have to go by road again mm. and you know there are some um, some states now having their own um, airports and all of that. So, um, beyond just the road, you know, I would employ, you know, most Nigerians to also explore other parts of the um, transportation, which is the ways and airports. Okay. Now, when it comes to promoting 
those destinations and areas, making them, like you talked about the issue of waterfalls. So many of them, Nigerians are not aware. How do we market those things enough for Nigerians to enjoy and begin to patronize them? Well, uh, marketing has to do with uh, telling our story. So mm. we, we need to look at all the different kinds of marketing. And one of the most uh, important one is um, word of mouth. Okay. So we need to get Nigerians to understand the importance of spreading good news. Mm. I, I say to people sometimes that it looks like uh, Niger sometimes Nigerians are bad news mongers. <laughs> Where there's a bad news, everybody's sending it and spreading it all around mm. um, WhatsApp and social media. But when there's a beautiful um, photo or a video, very few people share it. So we need to get more Nigerians to understand that, mm. look, this is our collective beauty and our, and our wealth, and we need to be proud about it. But how about being intentional about uh, marketing those things? Because w when you, we watch some international uh, stations sometimes, we see, ah, they say travel to this country, you know, the beauty, mm. the, the target, whatever they target, as a way of marketing such kind of... We remember, in fact, like uh, countries like Tanzania and uh, even Rwanda now, uh, there are so many, you know, robust... Uh, uh, marketing strategies campaigns. around and drawing people's attention to the countries. Yes, uh, and, and that's why we're quite um, thankful that you know there are a lot more marketing collaterals now. I know that the NTDC has just released a few uh, more marketing collaterals and okay. in fact at Nigeria Travel Week we'll be able to see some of these ones. Uh, so how we need to just budget a lot more to get these videos and these messages out so mm -hmm. more Nigerians can well, particular more about even the Nigerians, okay. we need to build that confidence and that you know pride in the average Nigerian mm. about who we are and you know what we have. And then once we do that, then the rest of the world will come. Okay, Nancy, yeah. the we see that an average Nigerian just likes to walk. Let's just walk, 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 and we keep making money. Uh, sometimes okay, but but walking and hustling is part of the thing and the habit of okay, let's take a trip go somewhere and relax with family or with friends or with colleagues it doesn't really happen much how do we begin to build that culture of okay after we've worked so hard or hustled for for the year at least towards the end of the year let's go somewhere and relax well first it must be an intentional um act it must be a very very intentional act like you just said you know, we Nigerians, we love to walk. In fact, some people will say they will not even take any Christmas holiday. Mm -hmm. So, but first, we can start with our companies, you know, making sure that beyond the company's um, retreats, we can also, you know, um, so we can also, um, what is it called, um, give them the um, liberty to also explore mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know let them have time out with their families and all of that but like i said it's it's a very very intentional you must be intentional about mm -hmm. it and again i don't think it's about whether you know they don't want to go but they feel like if i'm to spend this particular amount of money in nigeria what, why don't i you know just go out there and mm -hmm. all so now it's now left for us the tour operators now to now bring it to their face and let them know that, okay, the amount that you want to go and spend is somewhere in Dubai. Mm. You know, you can have such experience here also okay. in Nigeria. Mm. But first, you know, it has to, it, 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 it first has to be a thing of the mind. You must be intentional mm. about it that, you know, at the end of the year, me and my family want to take a trip down to Ekwe Resort or La Campagne or Obudukatu Ranch or, you know, even down to Abelkuta or somewhere. So it's, it's an intentional um, act beyond you, you know, just saying I just want to just go. All right. Now, if you talk to us about the uh, Niger the travel week, basically, what does this, how, how is it changing the trend and what happens during the week? So Nigeria Travel Week started in 2017 hmm. and we're very proud to say that we've uh, been uh, part of a movement or we've, we've actually started a movement mm. uh, since from 2017 till now we've seen a lot more tour operators who have come up who have started creating tour packages around Nigeria these things we did not have um, I mean there were very hand few um, uh, very few people who were actually creating these tour packages mm. and for tourism to thrive you need those kind of products you need somebody you need for uh, 
people to be able to say, look, I can get a 3-9 package in Akure, for example, or in Abuja, and then you pay for it just like we can book those packages around the world. And so what we do with Nigeria Travel is uh, have a series of events all through the week where we get, you know, we get the industry, we have master classes where we get some of the young um, and, and even the experienced ones to come together and look at ways that we can sharpen our skills mm -hmm. and do better with tourism. Uh, we have um, talk sessions, we have panel sessions. This year, for example, we have a special stakeholders meeting with uh, the CG of the National Park Service who will be, you know, sharing, you know, opportunities that, you know, have just opened up. I mean, the federal government has just allowed for private, uh, public-private partnerships mm. for the national parks, which happens everywhere. So there are things that we need to talk about. The DG of NTDC will also be, you know, speaking with uh, the industry and letting us know all of the new things, um, um, things that we need to know about mm. tourism, especially for the travel Wh trade. When it comes to... Uh, creating enabling environment what 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 does government need to do in this area because we see that the the responsibility of beautifying and marketing and projecting and promoting those destinations uh, private sector do it better you know we've had the the nigeria tourism development uh, commission corporation corporation yes. rather for so many years now you know they come, they have a template and all of that but translating it to that tangible thing that Nigerians should mm. see and feel, uh, we've seen that they don't really have uh, that, you know, that go ahead. Yes, um, I, I think the responsibilities um, should come to all of the um, public sector um, administrators to put in place policies. Mm. So we're not even looking at uh, taking gigantic steps, we're just saying just put those policies in place. And let me give you an example of a kind of policy that could simulate mm. uh, tourism, for example. Uh, a state recently announced that um, every Friday is Adire Day. Hmm. So you, you go to work dressed in Adire. Hmm. Well, naturally, Nigerians will go to work dressed in their natives. Yeah, now, when you say Adire, what it means automatically is that people then go out of their way to buy Adire, mm -hmm. which means that you are going to then grow that Adire industry, mm -hmm. and then you're going to create a lot more awareness. So imagine that, for example, Lagos State then says, look, Every, um, every term, all secondary schools must go on a tour. So maybe a tour, go around the Lagos, all of the five billets, for example. Mm. You know? um, maybe you could say that all companies should ensure that you know, uh, they have a particular time where they can travel around the state or around, around the country. Mm. I mean, uh, India just uh, started a, a massive campaign where you, if you go to about five places, um, you get an incentive. You get to be paid a part of what you have spent on that trip. Mm. So those kind of incentives will naturally get people to start to think about That, that is being traveling. intentional that uh, Nancy was talking about earlier yes. on. Yes. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's important. And, and that's why we're, we're, we're actually very, um, very proud of, of TVC and all that you have been doing um, for the tourism industry. Thank you. And I must, um, I must say that we have, uh, since we started in 2017, been looking at... Um, media houses because of course the media plays a very significant yeah. role in all of this yeah. i mean mm -hmm. government cannot go about saying all of these things but the media can pass those narratives mm -hmm. and tvc has been very consistent since 2017 that we have been taking notes thank you you know to spread the news just mm -hmm. like we're having these sessions now about mm -hmm. um, tourism and about the beauty of nigeria exactly. and that's why just like you said one of the projects for nigeria travel week is the tourism awards mm -hmm. and uh, we're presenting to you today, even though this was announced um, virtually okay. uh, due to COVID, we're presenting to you um, an award. Wow. Which um, wow. is, um, so this is Nigeria Tourism Awards. Wow. And this so, is so we're getting to do this on air. This is yes. amazing. Yes. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think there's a better way to do this. And wow. in fact, um, the actual honors will be held on the 5th of February. Uh, mm. where we are going to hold the, um, the, the next uh, 2021 edition of, okay. of the awards. But this is to say to TVC, uh, this wow. is Best Tourism Support Media, uh, that we really do appreciate all that you have been doing you. to promote thank tourism. You. I mean, if all media houses do as much as you do mm. in getting Nigerians to understand and love and see the value of traveling, wow. then we would have um, achieved a thank lot Thank you. More. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. We really appreciate this. This means a lot to all of us. On behalf of uh, TVC, we receive this with all thanks and with all open arms. Thank you very much. Thank you very and much. And thank you for Congrats. what you do as well. Whoa, this is amazing. Wow.
Nigeria Tourism Awards. We just got this. This is amazing. This is really amazing. <laughs> I will appreciate this. Thank you very much. GVC News, Best Tourism Support Media. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Ify. Thank you. And thank you, Nancy. You're we are involved in the Waka Waka yeah, business yes. now, isn't it? The this ministry. is good. I'm moving the ministry forward. Uh, no, the ministry is moving to the uh, to the city or the permanent <laughs> site. <laughs> All right, now, uh, Nancy, um, the, we, we've had lots of destinations in the country where, uh, like we were saying, a lot of them have not been developed beyond the way they were naturally, they were just, just naturally the way they have always been. But when someone is traveling to places like that, of course, the history of, you know, how this place is, the Olumorok, you know, and so on, you know, those history is good. But after going, climbing the rocks and going around, then what next? You know, so when it comes to invest, I'm, I'm driving at the issue of investing in those things, you know, to begin to beautify. How much of a task would that be generally? Well, um, for the government, mm. they might be feeling like, okay, it's too much of a tax for them, but I know the old public to private um, scheme that, you know, they've brought about now yeah. would move, you know, the old um, investing into um, those storage sites, you know, come alive now. Mm. So, for instance, on the rock now, like you said, after climbing the rock, you know, and throwing around what nest mm -hmm. you get. So, you know, there are some other stuff that could be attached to, mm -hmm. you know, the Olumorok as a tourism um, attraction. But, you know, like I said, the um, government might feel like it's too much for them. But with this old public to private scheme, I think that will move, that, that will actually go a very long mm -hmm. way. Because when some private companies or, or private organizations take hold of such um, tourist um, attraction, you know, it goes beyond just being in the natural form you get. Mm -hmm. And nobody will have to, like, start saying, that, okay, funds now is an issue on mm -hmm. why we don't have those places developed or why we don't have competent people manage such facilities. All right. Now, recently, the, uh, the United States mission in Nigeria uh, created a grant, ambassador's funds for the Oshun, Oshun yeah. Oshubu, you know, grove and all of that with some of the shrines that will be, you know, uh, going through some upgrade and to, for preservation and all of that. That's a great partnership that Ni the whole of Nigeria is really grateful for. And when it comes to partnerships in that regard, how much of those uh, should we be doing to ensure that uh, we preserve some of, some of the you know, sites and places that, you know, if you don't preserve them, uh -huh, after some time they go extinct, yes. you know, and so on? Yes, uh, just like I've said, there are there are lots of those kind of grants and funds hmm. hanging all around the wow. world. There are wow. lots of them. Uh, during COVID, for example, there were countries in Africa that got COVID grants for the tourism industry. Hmm. You know, but these things we need to reach out for them. Okay. We need, to, and that's where that's where um, the public sector comes in. Hmm. However, for the private sector, uh, there are other ways that we could also attract. We could also attract um, uh, grants and those kind of funds. But it needs collaboration. It needs. You need people to be working together. The industry has to be united. And that's what we're hoping that, you know, projects like Nigeria Travel Week can achieve, you mm -hmm. know, getting uh, everyone from the different um, uh, components of the value chain to come together, whether it's hoteliers, whether it's airlines, whether it's store operators uh, and, uh, and, the, and the likes. When you have everyone talking together and we're looking at unique products, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at uh, pro uh, projecting our unique propositions as, as a country and as a destination, then we'll be able to attract a lot more of those kind of grants and funds from around the world. All right. Now, uh, Nancy, l let me talk from the perspective of food. You know, I like food. <laughs> you know. But the point there is, you know, when you go to different parts, Nigeria has so much food, so much food. Mm, mm really beautiful, <laughs> where you go to every state. In fact, within the state, you go to different lo uh, localities. There are different foods from different places and all of that. How do we also begin to project? Because food is a very critical aspect of tourism from uh, what, what I see and, and know. And how do we begin to promote that very, very distinctively? At least we we'll still remember the jollof rice Jolof debate rice, between yeah, Nigeria and, yeah, Ghana. and Ghana. And uh, some people say Sierra Leone and Senegal and so all of that, but uh, we know what that is. Okay, so uh, food tourism is a thing. Mm. It's a huge thing all over the world. Yeah. Um, it's called gastronomy, okay. you know. And um, like you said, one thing, you know, 
most top pretos now are doing now is that anytime they are organizing a tour to a particular state mm -hmm. or a location, mm -hmm. they try and infuse food okay. into it. Great. So for instance, maybe you have an expatriate among your tour, your as your tourist mm -hmm. and they're on your tour and they are coming okay, let's say um they're going to Ibadan mm -hmm. and um they are They've not tasted Amala before. But you know that Amala oh, Sky yeah. is like one of the <laughs> best, you know. I heard, I heard the Ibado Amala is the best Amala anywhere in Nigeria. I don't know about that, but you well, know. I, I heard, I just heard, I just <laughs> but heard. But you know, mm. when, when you step into Ibado, you, you know, the first thing, when you, I must eat, mm. you know, the Amala and all of that. So we take a, a step forward by, you know, making them experience that food part, take them to one of the best restaurants that offer that part. And we also go further again to, you know, have a cooking class mm. for them. Wow. You know, create an experience. As part of uh, the package. Get, yes. It's create an experience for them. Mm. You know, some of them don't know how the amala is being turned. They don't know how, you know, that's an experience that a long last lasting experience. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So, you know, and it goes far to, you know, when you go to the north, you have the two Shinkafa, mm -hmm. you know, we create such experience again yeah. for them. So it's part and parcel of what we a it's process. a great thing. Yeah. Uh, the but, but that debate whether Ibadan produce the or make the best amala is still there. So I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like well, um, Effie, yeah. this 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 is really. Uh, I'm I, I'm still looking at it. I'm still looking at it. This award that you've uh, has been given to TVC. Thank you very much for this. Thank, thank you. you very much. As you we wrap up, it. as we wrap up uh, the segment now. Thank you very much for coming, uh, Nancy and Sofo. Thank Waka Waka you. CEO, thank mm -hmm. you very much for coming. Yeah. And uh, Efetobo Awana, thank you very much for coming. And uh, thank you for everything that you're doing, promoting Nigeria, promoting destinations, and so on. Thank really you appreciate much. you. And thanks for this award as well. Thank you very much. Thank this you. means a lot to all of us. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And uh, Nancy, thank you too. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah.